This clip is designed to give you the basics of Exchange Storage before you begin creating your storage groups and databases. To start with, when you install Exchange, a default storage group is created with a single database. Now, if you selected the option during the install that says you have pre-Outlook 2007 clients, you'll also have a public folder database. If we look into the Exchange folders themselves, you can see the storage group and find the database. It has an EDB extension. As mail is added, the size of this database will grow and grow. The size limit for the Exchange Standard Edition is 50 gigabytes, although you can modify that through the registry if you like. The Enterprise Edition has no limit. But logically, the larger the database, the longer it will take for backup and recovery solutions in the event the disk crashes or the database is corrupted in some way. But you might notice a lot of other files here. Many of these are log files called transaction logs. When email comes into the server, it goes into the memory and is written to the logs, and then eventually that information is written to the database. Each log is one megabyte in size, so these logs help to provide a redundancy for your mail. You'll note that the current log is e00.log. When that reaches the one megabyte limit, it's closed out and it's renamed to something with a much larger name, and then the next log is started. Now a storage group can handle more than one database, but the logs for that database will all be intertwined within the storage group. There's no separation between the two. So if you have several databases within the same storage group, there may be a negative impact on performance or recoverability at some point. So Microsoft's recommendation is to use one storage group for one database. In future clips, we'll discuss high availability solutions, backup and recovery solutions, and so forth. But one thing to keep in mind with simple storage architecture is that your logs and database should both be kept off of the drive that holds the operating system. Exchange can be installed to that drive if you like, so your OS and Exchange application files can be on a drive together. But you want your database on a separate drive, and even better, you want your transaction logs on a separate drive too. If you can implement a form of RAID for the database, we recommend RAID 5 for that. And for the logs, RAID 1. That's the ultimate. If your database fails, you can use those transaction logs to recover your data from the time you performed your last backup of the database until the time the database failed or became corrupted. But if the database and logs are on the same drive and that drive crashes with no RAID solution in place, you have just lost a day's worth of mail. So being that email is so important, keeping the database and logs separate, considering RAID solutions, perhaps even considering high availability solutions, these are best practices for your exchange storage. I hope you found this informative, and I'll see you in the next lesson.